This video is made possible by Spencer Shipley at Packy Webb Ford in Downers Grove, Illinois. Spencer is dedicated to finding the right car for you in the quickest time possible. Give him a call or contact him with the information up on the screen or found in the description below. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2021 Ford F-150 XL Power Boost. Up front is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 and down below is a 10 speed automatic transmission with a hybrid motor inside of it. That's right, this is a hybrid F-150. And that's why I'm excited to be driving it today. Yes, this is an XL, which is pretty much the base model. However, you can get the hybrid drivetrain on any trim that the F-150 comes in, which I think is super, super smart from Ford. It helps keep costs low. If you wanna get into a hybrid, you don't have to get the Platinum. You don't have to get the Limited. You don't have to get the top trim, the top dog. You don't have to get all the bells and whistles if you just want the hybrid drivetrain. And that is exactly what this truck offers. Before we get started, if you are looking to sell your car, click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com wants to buy your vehicles with a salvage title, running, non-running, clean title, whatever it is. And if you like the quote, you hit accept and they come pick up your car in less than 24 hours. I promise you it's the easiest, fastest, most pain-free way to sell your car and you can get your free quote by clicking the link in the description below. Actually, one last thing before we get going here. I am driving this Power Boost F-150, the hybrid F-150 right now. But if you are interested in the Platinum F-150, I'm actually driving that car next and will be my next video. And so I will leave that review at the end of this review if you'd like to check out what the Platinum has to offer. So let's get back to that 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 as well as hybrid drive system. Well, the 3.5 liter V6 we've seen in a bunch of other cars. This isn't a new engine for Ford. They've been using it for quite some time and it makes good horsepower. But what is brand new for 2021 is the hybrid. So inside of the 10 speed automatic transmission, there actually is an electric motor as well as a 1.5 kilowatt hour battery that powers it. The electric motor itself is good for about 47 horsepower according to Ford. And altogether, it gives this truck 400 horsepower and well over 500 foot pounds of torque, which is absolutely amazing. This is actually the most powerful engine offered in the Ford F-150 for 2021. And there's six different drivetrains that are offered. So base model with the most horsepower, I think this is the sport truck. This is kind of sporty. Now I will put the fuel economy up on the screen and arguably it isn't that much different from a standard F-150, 24 in the city and the highway, which is still very good for a pickup truck. But as we'll move into it, I'll tell you why the hybrid is absolutely worth it when we talk about the interior features. Actually driving the hybrid, it's fine. It has a 10 speed, so it's shifting a lot, but I don't really notice it. The only way I can actually tell is that up on the dash, it tells me what gear I'm in. But if it weren't for that, I wouldn't even be able to tell that it's shifting. I do get a little bit of humming from the electric motor, but it's to be expected out of any hybrid. And it is really, really quiet. Just driving around town here with that electric motor helping out, it's really quiet. And I really, really like that. This is a very civilized pickup truck. Right now I'm driving an all electric in a pickup truck. I've never done that before. This is so surreal. This is the future right here. I'm sure down the road, I'll drive a cyber truck. I'll drive whatever Rivan is making. I'm sure I'll drive the electric Hummer. But right now, February 3rd, 2021, this is the first time I've driven a pickup truck powered just by electricity. That's awesome. And then once I get on it, the motor does kick back in, but for a brief glimpse there. That's so cool to me. So, so cool. All right, power boost. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fast for a truck. I mean, like, this is a base model truck. It shouldn't do that, but it has this sort of whooshing noise. You definitely hear the electric motor helping out and that little ding that you heard, that's just because of low fuel. I didn't break it or anything. It really has solid, solid power. That's a big plus of the hybrid, is the fact that you do actually get a power bump over just the 3.5 liter twin turbo in other F-150s. Love that. 
Last but not least about the drivetrain is the fact that you can get the hybrid in two or four wheel drive. Now this is the four wheel drive XL, which I'm very happy that it is, but just know that if you for some reason want a two wheel drive, maybe you want to save a little bit of money, it's a work truck or whatever, then you can still get the hybrid option with that. So let's talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to go through in here. Even though it is a base model, there's still a lot of good features and I'm excited for it. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of physical gauges. On the left is my tachometer. In the middle, I have a screen as well as oil pressure, coolant temperature, fuel, and transmission temperature, which I really, really love that F-150 just leaves that up there. And Chevy, you have to kind of dig for it and find that gauge. Ford, they just leave it right there because if you're towing, you want to keep an eye on it. Then we do have that screen. I'll cycle through a couple different things on the screen here. This is very, very base model. Uh, you're not going to get a whole lot of info, but it is what it is. It does have the calm screen, which I really loved in the Explorer and the Bronco. I think it's really smart that they did this. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my cruise control options as well as my voice commands, volume, and my lane keep assist on and off, which I really like. Then on the right, I have my selectors for that center screen and the gauges that we just talked about, as well as menu, skip track, phone, things like that. Talking about the shifter really quick here, it is on the column, and I like the feel of it. It's very, very easy to get in and out of gear. It almost feels too easy but I like that. Pretty much anyone can get this truck into gear without a struggle. To the left of me, I have like gauge dimmer switches and my bed cargo light, fuel door, as well as my outlet button. We'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about the bed. Then on the door, I have my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors. But if you open the door slightly on the right-hand side of the vent, this was pointed out to me, by Spencer, there's actually a little American flag on the dash. I love that little accent. I think it's so smart and it just makes me feel a little bit extra special and reminds me where this truck was built. Moving into the center, this is where I'll find my screen. Now this is not the base model screen, but this is the base model screen for hybrids, if that makes sense. So any hybrid is going to have this screen because there's a couple of hybrid specific options that I need to pay attention to. And I like it. I like the screen a lot. It has very good frames per second. It is the Sync 4 system as opposed to the Sync 3. Some people weren't happy with the Sync 3, but this has Sync 4, which is a lot better. And so there's a couple things I like. Of course, first of all, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, standard, absolutely love that. I think it should be standard on all vehicles. Up at the very top of the screen, I do have a button for my cameras. I can toggle my cameras when I am not moving. Uh, this is great for backing up, for trailers, for hitches. Make sure I don't bump my beautiful truck into anything, and I like it a lot. But then, my favorite thing with this center screen is a hybrid-only option. And not only a hybrid-only option, but this is the only hybrid from any manufacturer that I've ever seen offer something like this. It has a power flow screen, which I've seen before on Priuses, on Chevys. Almost all hybrids have some type of power screen. What they don't have is the fact that when the engine is on, it tells you why the engine is on, what it's doing. This is absolutely amazing. For someone that's super critical of their vehicle, and like if I had a hybrid, I'd be like, oh, why, why is the engine on? Oh, there it is. It's telling me why the engine is on. Sometimes it leaves the engine on because it's really cold out and I left the heater on, so it has to keep it warm. So that's why the engine's on. Sometimes the engine is on because it needs more power and I'm asking more from it. I love the fact that it gives you a reason. It's not just, oh, the engine's on. It says why the engine is on. And I think that that's spectacular. I do also have my pro power on board settings. So as we'll talk about later, there is a outlet in the bed that is a 240 watt outlet, which is spectacular. I love that. And that is a big reason why I'll buy the hybrid. But again, I'll talk about that later on, but I can run that through the center screen and it actually gives me the possibility of generator mode, utility idle, I can turn it on and off. So, so smart. I love this feature in the hybrid F-150. Down below that, I do have some controls for that center screen. These are physical controls. They're all right. This is very base model to me, but they look fine. They work. That's all I can ask. Then I have my climate control options, dual zone. I love the new knobs in the new F-150 for the climate controls. I think they look really good. I think they function well. And overall, just all of the heater and cooler controls. Very simple, easy to use. I like the look of them. To the left of that, that is where my four wheel drive settings are. 
which I can lock, which is very, very nice. To the right of the climate controls, I do have a 12 volt outlet as well as a 120 volt, 20 amp outlet wall outlet, which is absolutely amazing. If you have to charge your camera or you have to charge, I don't know, your toaster, you can do that right here in the F-150 and I love that. And then I have this giant center console, two USBs, a USB-C and a traditional USB in the center console. Big cubbies, lots of storage here in the center, which I really, really like. On the left side, I have this big area where the shifter would be on like a platinum. And then I have a little phone holder and I have two cup holders. So we'll do the big friggin' bottle test. And unfortunately, this truck does not pass the big friggin' bottle test like I was hoping it would. All right, so I'm filming the interiors and exteriors and I just put the bottle in the rear cup holders on the front center console and it fits. So I'm gonna revoke my fail and give the F-150 a pass because still an accessible front cup holder allows for the big friggin' bottle. So we'll give it a pass. However, I do have this giant center console that opens up backwards and will actually fold out into a table so this does get the table feature that the platinum raved about with the folding shifter it's just it doesn't have a shifter down in the middle so it doesn't need to fold up but i do have a fold out table for the center which i really really like now the seats are decently comfortable surprisingly given the fact that it's a base model that these are some weird sort of cloth that doesn't look expensive, but they're comfortable. I'm enjoying my time here in the F-150 and I really have no complaints about it. Speaking of seats, however, we do have back seats. So let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2021 Ford F-150 Power Boost XL. And the leg room back here is great. I am sitting normally and my knees are not hitting the front seat. That could not be said about F-150s of yesteryear. The cabs have gotten pretty big and I really, really enjoy that. Over here, if you'll notice, this seat is actually folded up. So these seats can be folded up, both the seat that I'm sitting on as well as this one over here to give you a bunch of cargo space back here. If you wanna lock something in and you don't have a bed topper or if you wanna keep something out of the elements, anything like that you can actually store back here i mean you could fit so much space back here so let me pick up the camera look at how much space that i mean that's my coat and tripod and my dealer plate and things like that but i mean like i could just sit on the floor and like like i could just put a bean bag there and be fine for a road trip not legal but fine and down here we have two vents um another wall outlet that i love a usb charger if i can open it There, there we go. USB-C and traditional USB. But I mean, look at this leg room. This is how I normally sit. And there's so much space between me and the front seat. Now, the downside of the back seat is that I don't actually have a middle window back here. So, you know, in the summer, I can't open up the rear window, unfortunately. But other than that, not many downsides of the back seat. The back seat is actually very bouncy and cushiony. I really enjoy it. And I think it's just great. So now we'll hop around the tailgate and actually take a look at the bed because that's where the power source is all right so we're on the back of the power boost f-150 first of all you do have your seven pin and four pin trailer hookups here which is very very nice tailgate is not power operated we don't have you know the sort of nice things over here just traditional but what i really like let's see if it comes across on camera these are measurements so you can actually measure stuff out, got a nice Ford logo, and make measured cuts just using the tailgate of your truck. One last thing about the tailgate is you press this button here, and there's actually a step that folds down like that, and then that's a handle to help you get up into the vehicle. So after a little bit of digging, it is winter here in the Midwest. That is a outlet that we are talking about in the center. You can toggle that on and off. That is great. It can power a welder, grinder, whatever it is. I'll put some stats up on the screen here because it's so cold <laughs> and I don't want to keep shoving my head in there. But basically, it's really great. And this is part of the reason why you get a hybrid. I'll put up on the screen what the standard trucks get, but the hybrid trucks actually get 
even more, which is absolutely fantastic and definitely something I would want to look at when buying a truck and would make me want to go hybrid is this rear outlet. You could power anything in the world back here, and I think that's absolutely awesome. Now we got to talk about the looks. I like the look of the F-150. I mean, I know this is a new, fresh redesign, but it also doesn't look that different from the outgoing 2020 F-150. And of course, this is the XL. It's in white, so it's, you know, it's not that crazy. It's not this stunning color. It, it is what it is. However, I like the sizing of it. I think it's proportioned well. That's all I really have to say about it. Speaking of exteriors, if you are legally required to run a front plate on your vehicle in the state or country that you live in, but you think it's too ugly, then click the link in the description below and get yourself a con plate. The con plate holder is a suction cup holder for your license plate that goes on the inside of your windshield. This means you can remain legal when driving around, but for pictures, for shows, it's easily removable from the windshield, so the front of your car looks its best. Click the link in the description below, get your own con plate, and keep your car looking looking good. So my final thoughts on the F-150 Power Boost, a hybrid pickup truck. How weird. Well, first of all, it's not that weird. This is not the first hybrid pickup truck. Chevy tried it. Dodge sort of did it. They just more so get participation points. There was just a little electric motor that was pretty much where the alternator would be. And however, the F-150 is the top selling vehicle in America, not top selling truck. No, 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 no. It's the top selling vehicle. If that tells you anything about our country. <laughs> and so now the top selling vehicle, the number one seller has a hybrid option. I think the most important thing is the same thing that I said about the Toyota Venza is that it's just important that this truck exists because if this truck exists and if it sells well, if companies start buying the hybrid F-150, well then they'll keep making them and the hybrid technology will get better and better and better with each vehicle they sell. They'll say, hey, people like this, let's put more time and effort into it. Let's put a bigger battery. Let's make the truck run on electricity more so than it runs on gas to the point where we're running on full electric trucks. This is the first step of the future. And I know earlier I was geeking out at the fact that I was driving a pickup truck in all electric mode, but really this is the dawn of a new era. And the F-150 is the one that's going to start it. This is the trendsetter. I love the outlet in the back. I love the driving experience. I love the table that flips out here in the middle. I love the power distribution screen in the center. And I love the fact that this comes on any trim level. If you just want a base model F-150 like this, you can get it with a hybrid. If you want a platinum, all the bells and whistles, you want it to massage you, heated and cooled seats and leather and nice wheels and all that stuff, you can get that in a hybrid too. But if you just want something simple, basic, this is it. And I love that. I think this is the dawn of the new era. This is when Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone. This is when the Wright brothers took flight down at Kitty Hawk. This is me at the zoo on YouTube, the first ever YouTube video. All of those events might not have been super spectacular at the time, but what they led to is something great. The iPhone launch led to a world of touchscreen phones. The Wright Brothers flight, which was what, 47 feet or something, led to commercial aviation and going from America to England in six hours. The video, Me at the Zoo on YouTube, was a short and terrible video, but now it led to my career. <laughs> Some kid filmed himself at a zoo, and now I'm driving an F-150 as my job and talking to a little box that I suction cup to the windshield. It's, it's the snowball effects. This, this is the footstep that sets off the avalanche. I'm hoping, I'm praying. And that's it. I, I don't. I didn't mean to get too deep on you, but man, this is a good truck. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Spencer Shipley from Packy Web Ford for getting me in the seat of this hybrid F-150. I was so excited by this. I hope you guys are excited by it. It's really, really something special. And that's all thank you to Spencer. Spencer works at Packy Web. He has tons of cars on the lot. He will find the right vehicle for you. Give him a call, shoot him an email, say, hey, I'm interested in the Power Boost F-150. Or maybe you're interested in Mustang. Maybe you're interested in the new Bronco coming out. Love that thing. Whatever it is, he will get you into the right car. Even if you want a used vehicle, 
he can help you out with that too. So please contact him, give him your business because he has helped out the channel and he has helped me take this very important step towards the future. And I mean, that's just awesome. Huge thank you to Spencer. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys.